I recently uh, did some research on the endocrine system. They have a label for that. They call it crinophagy. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, I didn't even know there's a whole set of uh, autophagy mechanisms within the endocrine system. Is it the same concept? It's just, can we just look at autophagy as it's just cleaning these cells up so that they work more efficiently? And we give them fancy names, but really the, at the base of what autophagy is, it's just repair, it's self-repair. Would you agree? Or do I need to look, do we need to look at these the endocrine system uses a t the stimulates autophagy different than the mitochondria. Yeah, it's probably much easier and uh, yeah, more effective to look at it as the yeah, like umbrella term autophagy. Because yeah, I've also looked at it and there's maybe the ones I found. I didn't hear or hear about the endocrine endocrine system autophagy, but I found like yeah, maybe like a dozen other names like virophagy, of right. viruses, immunophagy, agrophagy, uh, pexophagy, <laughs> glycophagy. So yeah, like there's a yeah different maybe organs and different uh, parts of the body uh that go through that process but yeah generally there's there's you know main there's three like main types which is like macro autophagy chaperone mediated autophagies but they're all like you know autophagy essentially and, right uh, macro autophagy is the describes this um cell cleanup and there's no way to like you can't like go into a workout and be like i'm gonna clean up my endocrine system right now like your body decides where it needs the most cleanup is that we just apply the techniques and the body is so intelligent it figures it out i think so yeah i mean i don't have like or we don't have any like measurements or ways to measure right. what i know of but i think i think that will, that, that's how pro probably would work um, yeah because that's how the like exercise side also uh, works yeah yeah and on the measurement thing why don't we have any measurement is it too hard to measure uh, and i don't know if you know annette boz she also has a, a popular youtube channel uh she she has a boz ratio where she looks at glucose over ketones and divides that if it's under like 40 you're in a pretty good amount of autophagy do you feel like we we can use a measurement like that to kind of get into the door in or do we just not know technically yes like it can be what i've used and heard is the glucose ketone index uh, right. which is i think similar uh, but um, at least the glucose ketone index would uh, show how deep of a ketosis you are and i think that generally if you are in ketosis then most likely there will also be increased autology uh, because they are regulated by the same uh, pathways so this liver glycogen depletion and ampk with the only caveat to that you know you can still let's say eat a large steak and like a ton of butter and uh, be in ketosis and with a low glucose ketone index but i don't think that in that scenario you're probably not in like super deep autophagy um, right so it's probably like you know if you're in a fasted state and you look at the glucose ketone index then yeah it can probably uh, tell you but if you yeah just ate or something then uh, it's a bit uh, yeah hard to tell like i don't uh, yeah i think it's gonna happen yeah it, this is something that comes up in our community all the time people are, are confused they're like but i'm in ketosis so shouldn't i be in autophagy and to your point like you could go on the carnivore diet Hmm. You can get into some deep ketosis, but you are definitely not stimulating autophagy because of the influx of protein and amino acids. Hmm. So one of the nuances with autophagy that I see isn't expressed enough is that it's stimulated not only from glucose coming down, but it's also stimulated from nutrients coming down, specifically amino acids. Would you agree with that statement? Is there something else we need to think about that might pull us out of autophagy other than protein? Yeah, protein is... I think protein could even be like a bigger inhibitor of autophagy than uh, glucose. Oh, interesting. Uh, because, you know, protein directly will stimulate protein synthesis and mTOR, which is kind of the antagonist of yeah. autophagy. So yeah. mTOR is kind of the growth switch. Uh, yeah, when your body is growing, then it's not really recycling and repairing itself. So they can't like coexist evolutionarily. It's like hard to allocate resources to do that. And that's why your body will, you know, detect the energy sensors and switches like AMPK and mTOR. Okay, which one is inhibited? Which one is turned on? Then I'm going to either grow, build muscle or basically go through uh, self-recycling. So uh, protein and amino acids specifically will stimulate mTOR and at least in that time will also inhibit autophagy. But you know, the same applies to carbs and uh, glucose and insulin. So, you know, even on a vegan diet, you can still, even if you're like, let's say low in animal protein, you can still inhibit autophagy by consuming too many carbohydrates mm -hmm. and uh, spiking insulin. Other things uh, that could inhibit autophagy would be like, you know, I think diabetes can also be uh, something that like, even if you're fasting can inhibit the autophagy mm -hmm. process because mTOR uh, detects also high blood sugar levels. So if you have diabetes, then chances are like your blood sugar levels will you know, stay 
elevated to a point where you're under the stimulation of mTOR all the time, and uh, that's going to have like a slowdown effect on the process of autology uh, as well.